the National Coronavirus Command Council has decided to enforce a nationwide lockdown for 21 days with effect from midnight on Thursday, the 26th of March. This is a decisive measure to save lives of South Africans from infection and save the lives of hundreds of thousands of our people. While this measure will have a considerable impact on people's livelihoods, on the life of our society and on our economy, the human cost of delaying this action would be far, far greater. From midnight on Thursday, 26th March, all South Africans will have to stay at home. So right now in South Africa, um, since the lockdown started, we've been in the process of four or five months of lockdown. But to go right back to the beginning where, we, where this all started was, you know, as with all the other countries around the world, uh, South Africa found itself in dealing with this um, in its own unique way. And the president decided that it was going to be two hard months of lockdown where everyone was on level five and no one could leave their houses not do pretty much anything. You know, I always, I always knew that there was a big need, but it's only really when you put yourself out there that you, you, you understand what the need looks like. When you put a face to the need, um, that's when it really gets you. Um, there's, there's a lot of people in South Africa um, that is underprivileged, um, that, that, you know, life's not easy. And coronavirus has, has really, really put a, a massive highlight on that. And that's when I started seeing, you know, week one, week two, week three into lockdown, how much the need is in South Africa. And I was just really, really moved with inside my heart to try and do something. You know, I've always been guilty of being one of those that looks at a situation and you go, I would like to help, but I don't know how. And then you just take a seat back into your chair and you, you do nothing about it. So myself and Emery made a, a commitment that, that we weren't going to take that, that easy option out, that this was a, a, a movement in our hearts that we wanted to, that we wanted to pursue uh, and we weren't going to back away from that. And I came across this video of an organization and the one video that I saw um, yeah, basically ripped through my heart when I saw three, four hundred ki kids sitting on a, on a rugby field waiting in a queue to, to get food and the video said that there wasn't enough food to feed everyone because the need was just too big and I was like no this is not this doesn't this doesn't sit well with me you know just me being a dad and giving my daughter absolutely everything that I can uh, I wanted to make sure that you know kids are, are, are getting treated the same a little three four five-year-old kids you look into their eyes and you see that there is uncomfortable, there's pain, there's hurt, there's hunger, you know, there's all of these bad things that you can in a moment look into a child's eyes and you can see this is not what my daughter's eyes are seeing and that's that need that was really speaking to me that my focus for the next however long was going to be kids, you know, kids that needs food. Um, obviously everyone talks about kids being the future but they can't be the future if they're being hungry all the time. So we were like kids are we're gonna make sure that kids are gonna get food. Three. 
I said it's really at that point when I, when I decided that I need help here, I need help to make sure because it doesn't feel like the impact that we are making is big enough, you know, there's so many kids that are standing in queue and don't have enough food, um, you know, they go there with maybe one or two meals a day, but that's it, you know, and it's not every day, so I was like, okay, let's, let's look at two, you know, let's look at organizations that will help me help them, you know, because I don't have the resources, I don't have the structural structures in place to make sure that I can get to everyone. But what I can do is use my platform, use my voice, use my resources and try and pull into with someone else and try and do it. Um, so that's really when the communication started with Hillsong Africa Foundation, um, just looking at what they were doing. It was structures that was already in place. Um, so it looked it was a very comfortable fit for me. It was people that I knew really well from church, um, there was obviously a, a trust factor there and yeah it was sitting very comfortable with me to see all the stuff that they were doing. They were already um, feeding thousands and thousands of people in South Africa so yeah just tapped into that, that, big, that big machine that they have running over there and, and that's when the goal started, um, which was the big goal for us at the time. My wife, uh, you know, she really felt like she wanted to aim for the stars. Uh, so she, the thinking was, the conversation was that, you know, the old, if, a, if a dream doesn't scare you, it's not big enough. So we, we got a, a target of, of, of 500,000 Rand, um, which is, is, a, is a lot of money. Uh, it's, it's, it, it, does scare, it does scare me, that dream. But, it was worth it was worth pursuing it it was something that we knew we needed to do go full in not something that we can do for a week and stop What's in the sauce? Milk. Yeah. I put baked beans. Yeah. A pinchas. Yeah. Onion and tomato. Okay. okay. And you know, uh, sometimes this, uh, the small boys they want to come for more. Yeah, because they're hungry. <laughs> yes. They're growing. And they go and play at the park, and then they come back. And uh, what I would love to do is at least uh, the, the parents. Yeah. Can just serve them a supper because we also serve them breakfast. For You're serving breakfast as well? Yes. Every day? Every day. No ways. What do you give birds for breakfast? Um, give them a porridge. Yeah. Sometimes give them bread with peanut butter and jam. Wow, uh, that's amazing. I wanted to glorify the amazing people that was out there. Um, in South Africa doing amazing things. So it was just making sure that I use my platform to go, this is how amazing you are, this is how amazing she is, this is how amazing work he's doing. And we picked like three or four or five um, organizations just to go, this guys are doing incredible work, these guys are amazing. So it started with that. The great thing was uh, the first outing that we did with uh, Heels in Africa was um, we did three stops in one day, three drops, and the first drop was Lucinda Evans, um, Felissa Adlafazi Betu organization. She was so, so, so full of joy. I'm just saying, well, if you don't know how much it means, you know, just explaining her story a little bit more in detail. So it feels like m myself and my wife, like, almost had this little bit of a relationship with her already for all the work that we did leading up to, to that day. And it's someone that I've never spoken a word to uh, in my life. But it's when we got, when we got to Lavender Hill and I could put a face to um, this, this, this hero that we've been trying to shine a light on. Where should we go? Hello. Let me give you a hug. Oh. Oh, <laughs> You uh, got the lavender yield. Yes. You brought the sunshine. Yes. So I wanted to come and meet you, you first. Awesome. So our community is lavender yield. And do you know if you Google lavender yield, it either takes you to Stellenbosch or it brings you here. 
And here yeah, the they speak about our pain mm. and our shame and gangsterism. And yes, it is there. But we do have lavender in the hills. Mm. And so every day when I work with a person, that's the lavender for me, for the hills. Mm. So the fact that you came to Lavender Hill. No, yeah. you Hill. <laughs> My normal work is gender-based violence and child protection. And I run an emergency safe house. I'm hiring a house. I also have a volunteer group and when children go missing, I go out and look for them. So that's my, my normal sure. job. And then when COVID happened, I decided to take all our program funds and our GBV funds and I started a kitchen. This is your house? This is yeah. House. If, oh, if, okay, take it to the office. If, if you don't mind, I would, I, love to, I would love to see where it started. The, the dog, where's the dog? <laughs> is it a big one? So, do we want one? Yeah, we are less on love. <laughs> yeah. amazing to to meet her and really just stand in front of her and say to her listen well done you're an amazing person incredible work that you're doing and I think that was the journey that I've been going on as a person where now I could actually stand in front of someone and really just look at them and tell them how amazing they are and not expecting that in return you know I, I'm, I'm so used to or sportsmen are so used to walking out in public places and hearing Either how amazing you are, or sometimes how not so amazing you are. But most of the time, it's it's how amazing you are. So, you know, this this time was just really me standing there, going, "You are." I'm in awe with what you're doing, and I'm really grateful and thankful for meeting someone like you, uh, and changing and inspiring my heart. Children are so amazing. They. They don't see the world like us. Like when you go into any place and you you meet children, they have so much hope. They um, they just give love to everyone. They don't have prejudice. They don't have they don't have anything like that holding them back. And I feel that their innocence should be protected as long as possible. That we should allow children to be children. That's why it was so important for us to just step in and, and help children. So now, you know, the process of, of the conversation between myself and Emery is like, uh, how are we going to get, how are we going to raise this amount of money for, for this goal? And um, yeah, the first, the first step was pretty easy. It was just making people aware of what we are doing on, on our platforms, on social media. And that got us, um, it, it gave us a start. I think probably got us to about 50,000 Rand which was incredible. Um, everyone chipped in. And so there's a lot of like 500 Rand, 200 Rand, 1,000 Rand, $50, you know, 20 pounds. So there's was, was a lot of people coming together to get to um, call it step one or phase one of, of trying to get to, to 500,000 Rand. But after that, I was like, okay, I can see it, it feels like it's, it's reached its potential in, in, in step one and it feels like there's not much going to happen anymore. And then I was a little bit overwhelmed and I, I remember jumping on my, my bike, my motorcycle, um, just going for, for a ride, just to try and, in my own head, try and see how this was going to be possible. Because it, it, it felt like it was a target that was a little bit too big. Um, uh, what's the th saying? Have you bitten off a bit more than you can chew? Um, but I remember it's so, so, so glaring, obvious, literally 200 meters outside my house, got onto the road and I was like, 
I just I've, I wish that the cricket world can can come together in in something like this to help for a cause that is international. It's it's based over different people, uh, different countries, but the cricket world coming together. And I was like, I feel really moved to to ask uh, cricketers around the world what would they what would they think of getting involved with this. But I, I, I felt really comfortable. It's never nice asking people for money, but this I felt was because of the movement of because of the heart of it was really good. I, f I felt it uh, very easy. So I got in touch uh, with a few international cricketers and. I was overwhelmed to see the response uh, from the players. Most of those guys would have never received a text message from me ever before. All responded with like, how can we help? What can we do? Hey guys, Lucky Ferguson here. Just want to shout out to Faf and Amari for the work they're doing with the Hillsong uh, Foundation. You guys are awesome. More than happy to help out anytime. Uh, keep up the good work and hope you guys are staying safe over there. Cheers. Hi Faf. Uh, Mark Wood here, just want to say a huge congratulations to you and everyone involved uh, with your charity. You've done amazing work and you should feel incredibly proud. Well done, mate. Hope to see you out here soon. But until then, keep doing the great work. Well done, Hi, mate. Hi, Fafi. How are you, brother? Good to hear you. Uh, good to see you are doing a lot of good work around the globe. And I'm so proud to to part uh, with your initiative and, and uh, felt very, very good the way you make sure they, they get everything they, they deserve. So I'm very, very proud of you and uh, hope to see you soon, buddy. Take care, bye. Buff, it's incredible to see the amazing work that you're doing in your community at the moment and that we can all come together and help support you at a time like this. Keep up the great work. Hi right, guys, this is a champion, DJ Bravo. Wanna say congratulations to Buff and his team for a great idea. To all the other cricketers around the world who supported, supported this, this project. Um, you know, we're all in this together. I'm happy to be a part of it and um, we encourage each and everyone to keep fighting, stay strong, keep believing. We're not giving up. Hey Faf, Virat here. Um, I want to congratulate you and your team for the amazing work you guys have done uh, through the lockdown, helping the community and those children in need. Um, something which is a noble cause, um, a great thing to do. And I was delighted to be a part of it in a small way um, that I did. And I just wanted to congratulate you guys. Wish you all the luck, uh, more power, more strength to continue doing this amazing work. And I'll always be available for any support, any help um, in the future, anytime that you guys need. Um, God bless you all. Cheers uh, and see you soon. Hey there, Faf. Congratulations on all the amazing work you're doing with the Hillsong Foundation. Um, it's great to support it in a small way, but um, so incredible to see you making such a difference to so many people's lives and what is such a tough time at the moment. So keep up the good work, mate, um, and I uh, look forward to catching up with you soon uh, over here in Dubai. I would like to get the names of that are the cricketers that decided to um, climb on the bus to, to help us get to the 35,000 kids. So from Australia, Joss Hazelwood, Pat Cummins, India, Suresh Raina, Virat Kohli, Hardik Pandya, Murli BJ, another Australian, Marcus Stoinis, uh, Rohit Sharma from India, Mark Wood, Stephen Croft, Joe Root, Sam Curran, all from England, Kane Williamson, Lockie Ferguson, Neil Wagner, all from New Zealand. Um, I contacted my um, team that I played for in, in Pretoria, the, the Titans, and they straight away said, yes, how can we help? Another avenue that I wanted to try was to get in touch with my sponsors, who I've been really grateful to have a relationship with them for quite some time. One of my sponsors, um, Panerai, which has been a dream to own one of their watches, they managed to give a brand new watch which sells for a lot of money um, as a gift to this great cause and then what we do is sell um, that off to someone and use the money for the project that we have. Um, so yeah, I'm really thankful for their generous heart. So I think the thing that stands out for me 
um, that's come from the coronavirus is that yes all of us um, has had some real challenges um, others a lot more than some of us um, but it has it has reminded me that you know this really 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 difficult season that all of us has gone through together has brought a great thing from it and it's people coming together and helping each other and I and I and I know that is there in South Africa but I've, I've seen it um, with my own eyes now I see that there's a lot of it um, people are doing things purely from a place of service and helping each other and I think that's a great lesson for all of us going forward is that this will eventually finish but the need in South Africa will still be there for a very long time. It was there before coronavirus and it will still be there after. It's important that we understand that this is a, a stepping stone for us to try and to do this more, to do it for longer. There's a role for us to play in this, to make sure that the, the kids who are the future, that we can give them as, as best and a chance to be successful in life. It's a big number, um, but with a lot of people or a lot of good hearts, it becomes a really small goal. As we said, the need is great, but the vision is even better.